This is a story about Haystack. On June 8th of this past year, I stepped off a steamy van that had bumped along a narrow two-lane road for the better part of two hours, and this is what I saw. Um, this iconic photo of the stairs cascading down into the ocean is a transcendent moment when you arrive at Haystack. And all of that anticipation of a place, a dream, and a story, and boop, here you are. This view is what prefaced one of the best experiences I've had in my life thus far. And even though this was the first time I had been to Haystack, the story of Haystack began for me nearly um, 20 years prior. When I was around 18 to 20 years old, I remember my undergraduate professor, Mark Ferris, talking about Haystack as this incredible place. He spoke of the architecture, the landscape, and the creative spirit that existed there. And I've always been intrigued by this and wanted to go as a participant or to teach a workshop. So when Paul Sakaridis called me to ask if I'd be interested in teaching a workshop at Haystack, it was a dream come true. So he asked me to teach a two-week workshop on hand building in clay. And from the time when I said yes to when the day it finally arrived, it was filled with so much preparation. Now, typically you would think it was preparation for the workshop, which indeed it was, but I also have a four-year-old son, a husband who works a more than full-time job and no grandparents within 400 miles so for us to make this two-week endeavor happen, it was quite a dance, with grandparents flying in from all over to help out and coordinating work schedules and school schedules. It was a miracle this came together. And I only say this because this is life. Doing your best to make these amazing things happen, leaning on friends and family, feeling guilty for being gone, realizing this is a great opportunity, feeling the conflict of all those emotions, but that wasn't just my story. It was the story of so many of the students who came to Haystack. And there's always this constant question of how am I gonna make this work? And it's not isolated to you, but my advice is figure out a way to make it happen, take a leap and go. Um, so this is, uh, um, this past summer when our workshop finally began and I how I organized the week was that I had structured time uh, in the morning for demos like an hour and then we would have time to work for the students we'd have lunch and then another hour or two of demos followed by another several hours of work time for for the students again and um, I started my demos by showing students how to build and, const uh, and construct simple objects and forms and then as the week progressed, we moved on to talking about more complex ways of construction and even how to think about building, like what does a coil look like? How many different ways can you make a coil? How can you pinch an object? What are all the different ways that you can think about touching the clay? And personally, I was kind of in the zone of making what I typically make because that's why I was there and that's kind of what I felt like was expected of me. But all the while, here I am in this incredible place and I'm pushing my students to think beyond their normal impulses, asking them to push themselves, getting them to try to venture into new things, try to make things bigger, try these ideas you've been sitting on for years, um, push yourself to think about new ways of approaching shapes you've done before. How many different ways can you form your fingers on the clay? Um, don't think that anything is too crazy. Just go for it. Try it. What's the worst that's going to happen? And at the beginning of the session, I had just finished reading Glenn Adamson's book, Fewer Better Things. And in it was a quote by ceramicist Bernard Palissy. Um, and I wrote it on the chalkboard in our classroom. And it reads, even if I used a thousand reams of paper to write down all the accidents that have happened to me in learning this art, you must be assured that however good a brain you may have, you will still make a thousand mistakes which cannot be learned from writings. And even if you had them in writing, you would not believe them until practice had given you a thousand afflictions. And this, be kind of, this kind of became our mantra for the week. And I started realizing that I was not pushing myself to try something new. 
And so about halfway through the workshop, I gave myself the same freedom I had given my students to try in this time. So I allowed myself to try newer forms and to not follow my own expected path and to experiment and to fail, but in all of it, to learn, to figure things out. Um, and it was really amazing. So all day we would get to work together and try out these new things and experiment and grow and, you know, figure out what worked and what didn't. And so virtually all day, so sessions would run from nine in the morning with the lunch break until 5 p.m. ish for dinner. And then we would do that all day. And then in the nighttime, we would work in the, into the evenings but we still found so much time for fun. And here's a shot of our class taking a break at night while uh, we all watch the moon rise over the ocean. And it was just, it's just, Haystack is just a magical place. I mean, everybody's working in the studio and somebody shouts out, hey, you guys, you have to see the moon rising. And everybody just scrambles out to watch this beautiful event occur um, at, of this moon rising over the ocean. And yeah, that's right. Haystacks on the ocean. So we would always try to squeeze in some time to go down to the beach, enjoy just the, the, the water and to refresh, sometimes to take a quick dip or just feel warm from those amazing rays of sun on, those, on that granite rock. Sometimes in the middle of the day, we would run out and get the most incredible lobster rolls ever known to man. And sometimes on the way home from those lobster rolls, we would stop to pick wildflowers on the side of the road to help make the studio feel just a bit more luxurious. Evenings sometimes would be filled with different games and wild times of Pictionary, who knows what. It was just really fun and a wonderful community and a great way to spend time together. And thus far, I've only talked about the ceramic side of things, but while you're also at Haystack, there's so many other mediums that are um, being taught there. So from um, woodworking to metal smithing to forging to uh, paper making, weaving. And the, week, the weeks that I was there, we had the wonderful gift of having Sonia Clark there as our artist in residence. And so while Sonia was there working. She was working on a project, but she would also invite all of the people at Haystack to come down to her studio space and assist her in making one of the projects. She was working on uh, a piece called Seeds, uh, Seeds and Stars, where um, she was doing cyanotypes, um, where she would have us put on seeds on top of this um, fabric that had already been prepped, and then we would put it out in the sun and get these amazing prints of them that would kind of look like the stars at night. And um, also she would have us um, have conversations about what is art, how to look at art, how to look at life, how to look at the trees around us. It was really amazing to see all of um, us who, some for some people in our group, that clay was not even a comfortable medium and then to stretch themselves to even be doing this these other things was it was really wonderful to have these opportunities of just learning something new a totally new medium and I also thought it was fabulous the conversations that would occur between um, the different faculty that were there and so this is a photo of me and Sonia together which was really funny so on the left there's um, a little paper kind of crumpled up thing and Sonia came into the ceramic studio and we're just chatting and she was fidgeting with something in her hands and I said what are you doing and she said oh this is just a tea bag I do this and um, I said well show me that and I realized it was kind of in the same way that I make these pinched forms and I was like well I want to know how to do this in clay so we kind of just sat down and we kind of just pinched together these little um, kind of cords in clay it was really fun it was just this really sweet moment together and it's just a really beautiful way of connecting with another person in a very casual way that we wouldn't normally get the opportunity to to do. And also, did I say anything about the food at Haystack? And by food, I mean dessert, because really it is just uh, amazing and completely decadent. And the food there at Haystack is just marvelous beyond belief. And for people like myself, who are the primary cooks at home, uh, to have two weeks where I don't have to cook a meal or do the dishes is just 
remarkable. So um, I just feel like that is such a wonderful part of the experience of being there too. It's essentially art camp um, and really an incredible, incredible time. So <clears throat> the last full day at Haystack, each studio sets up a little show of the work students made during their two weeks. It's really uh, incredible to see it all set out and everyone is so proud of what they've accomplished during their time and it's one, a wonderful way to celebrate the time spent together. And each person left having tried something new, whether it was finally getting an opportunity to build an object that was stuck in their mind for months or trying glaze on, sculpt, on, on their sculpture for the first time. Perhaps it's pushing yourself to try a new clay body, learning how to mix glaze for the first time. Everyone had successes and failures, but even the failures weren't truly that. They were maybe just a road to try a new project that would come to fruition in the months ahead. And it was just this really extraordinary time of meeting people from not only all over the country, but also all over the world. It was just a really, really special time. And I felt so fortunate to have had this opportunity because even though I was teaching the workshop, I still felt like a student in so many ways. And I feel like we all walked away with not just a new body of work, but with this wonderful new clay family. So thanks so much, and I hope you get to one day walk down this path to have your own transcendent and spectacular experience at Haystack. And thanks to all these wonderful people from the workshop who contributed images that are used in this presentation. Thank you.